Welcome to another Fear No Fix video. Today we're going to be helping you diagnose your lean condition. A lean condition occurs when you have an excess of air or a lack of fuel in your engine. Some of the most common symptoms of a lean condition may include a lack of engine power, rough idle, stalling, maybe misfires, hesitations, stumbling, just about anything along those lines performance wise. So we're going to go ahead and get started by checking for codes. The easiest and most obvious way to identify a lean condition in your vehicle is by reading codes with your Blue Driver scan tool. We're going to connect to this truck right now. We're going to read codes and see what we have. I'm just going to do a check engine light scan. And we've got a P0171, so that confirms that we've got a lean issue on bank number one. So we're going to look further into that. We're going to use our Blue Driver scan tool live data to look further into the issue, maybe identify where exactly the lean issue is. We'll have a look at our fuel trims and just have a good idea of what's going on from there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start the vehicle. We're going to let it run for a while. We're going to get up to a full operating temperature. So all the O2 sensors are reporting data and the truck's calculating fuel trims and all that. All right, so you can see we're fully warmed up. We're monitoring our fuel trims. We have bank one, bank two. This truck's a V8, so we have two banks. If you have a four cylinder or something like that, you only have one bank to worry about. We're focusing on bank one here, although bank two looks like it's pretty far out as well. Short-term fuel trims, basically this is a rapid correction that's being made to the amount of fuel being injected into the vehicle. Long-term fuel trim is a bit more of a indicator of the general overall behavior. Uh, as it says, it's a longer, more averaged out value. You can see here that right now we're getting pretty high positive values for everything. What this is telling us is that the vehicle's ECM is dumping more fuel in. It thinks the truck is running super lean. It thinks it needs more fuel and it's overcorrecting. So this is going to cause really bad fuel mileage. It's going to cause poor performance. Maybe it's going to, uh, the exhaust is going to smell bad. All right, so a normal healthy vehicle is gonna have a long-term fuel trim roughly less than plus or minus 9% or so. On this truck, we're seeing way outside of that range, so we know there's definitely some sort of lean condition going on, so we're gonna have a look into that right now. A common cause of a lean condition is a vacuum leak. A vacuum leak is when air is getting into the engine that the engine's computer cannot account for. This causes the fuel mix ratio to be off and the engine to run poorly. To do our test, we're going to be using a vacuum gauge like this one. This is a pretty cheap tool that you can get at almost any automotive store. We've connected ours to the brake booster vacuum hose, but you can connect it to any vacuum hose after the throttle body. A normal operating engine will operate between 17 and 21 inches of mercury of vacuum. If you have a vacuum leak, your gauge will read somewhere between 3 to 9 inches below that range. Okay, Chris, start it up. Okay, Chris. All right, so now that we've confirmed that we have a vacuum leak, let's move on and find out where that leak is coming from. Once you know you've got a vacuum leak, now it's time to find it. We're looking for any point of entry of air after the mass airflow sensor. This could be hoses and lines. This could be gaskets, say your intake gasket. This could be injector seals. Basically, you just gotta have a look around, think of anywhere that air could be entering into your fuel air system and throwing off your trims. We're basically just gonna do a visual inspection. We're gonna look at our hoses. We're gonna make sure they're not dry rotted. They're not cracked. We're gonna make sure everything's on tight, no missing hose clamps. Just basically looking for anything that's out of the ordinary. So our visual inspection didn't show us anything obvious. So now we're gonna move on to something a little more active. We know that somewhere air is getting into the system. So we can take advantage of this by adding something to the system ourselves, which will cause the engine to react accordingly. One option is you can add some water. You can spray it around your hoses, around your intakes, around your gaskets, just about anywhere where it might get into the system. If a little bit of water vapor gets in there, the engine might bog down for a couple seconds. Additionally, if you use soapy water, then you might see bubbles, which will give you a good visual indicator of exactly where the leak is. This truck is running really poorly. It's already stumbling half the time. It doesn't even want to run. So this probably isn't going to work for us. So we're going to go for something a little more risky. A common way to do this is to take some propane and spray it around your hoses, around your gaskets, just about anywhere that could make its way into the system. A little bit of propane gets in there, it's going to burn, the engine's going to idle a little bit higher for a couple seconds, you'll hear it surge. 
Another option is to use carb cleaner. You can spray it around anywhere that it might get in, and if the engine suddenly kind of speeds up a bit, then we've got a pretty good idea of where our leak is. Obviously, if you're spraying anything flammable around the engine bay, you want to be very careful. We've got safety glasses, we've got fire extinguishers, I've got a helper on hand just in case something goes wrong. All right, so let's get started. All right, we got a pretty good idea of where it is, so let's go in for a closer look. So, yep, there it is, right there. I don't know how we missed this earlier. It almost looks like somebody cut it with a knife. I bet we start the engine back up right now, we'll be able to hear that as well. So I'm gonna get Jordan to start the engine up and we'll give you an example of what exactly you're listening for when you're looking around the engine bay. Start it up, would you? All right, so the cause of our vacuum leak is pretty obvious. If you didn't find anything when you were going through these steps, then there's one more thing to look at before we move on to fuel. Next, we're gonna have a look at the mass airflow sensor. Once you've ruled out vacuum leaks as a potential entry point of air into the system, now it's time to have a look at the measurement of the air coming in itself. We're gonna have a look at our mass airflow sensor. If your mass airflow sensor is going bad, then there might be more or less air coming in and the vehicle might not be adding the right amount of fuel. One way to test out your mass airflow sensor is to check the resistances and voltages of the pins on the sensor itself. In order to do this, you'll need to find a published specification for your vehicle. We're not gonna go into that today because it's gonna be so different for everything on the road. We'll show you another quick way to check out whether maybe your mass airflow sensor is not operating properly. With the engine running and fully warmed up, unplug your mass airflow sensor. Once the sensor's unplugged, the engine controller will realize it's not getting data anymore and it'll fall back to default values. If once you unplug the sensor, the vehicle starts running better all of a sudden, that's a pretty good indicator that you're getting bad data and you may need to replace the sensor. All right, so if unplugging the sensor didn't make a difference and we're not getting any math codes, then that rules out most issues on the air side of the system. We're running lean, that means we have an imbalance between the amount of air and fuel. We've ruled out air, so now it's time to look at fuel. To begin diagnosing the fuel system, we're going to first check our fuel pressure. To do this, we're going to use a fuel pressure tester. This is a fairly inexpensive tool that you can get from most automotive hardware stores. It requires a Schrader valve to hook into the fuel system, however, not all vehicles are equipped with a Schrader valve. If your vehicle is not, you can use a fuel line T in order to allow you to connect your fuel pressure tester. Okay, let's hook up this fuel pressure tester and test our pressure. Before we hook up our fuel pressure tester, we first need to relieve the pressure in our fuel system. You're going to want to wear gloves and safety glasses in case any fuel squirts out at you. To relieve the pressure, I'm going to remove this fuel pump relay, and I'll get Chris to start the engine until it dies. Go ahead. All right, let's hook up our fuel pressure tester. Now that we have our fuel pressure tester hooked up, I need to reinstall the fuel pump relay so we can get pressure on the rail. Then I'll need Chris to cycle the key from the off to the on position without starting the engine a couple of times to build pressure. And we'll watch the pressure rise on the gauge. Okay, cycle it. Depending on your vehicle, your fuel pressure should be somewhere between 30 and 60 PSI. We're showing just under 50 here, so it looks like we're okay. However, if you're showing a fuel pressure that's less than the specification for your vehicle, you'll need to further diagnose your fuel system, and we'll go through that now. So now that we've determined that we have good fuel pressure, we need to do what's called a rest test. That's where we're gonna leave this at pressure and see if our fuel pressure gauge drops. If it drops, we have a leak somewhere. Our gauge has been sitting here for about five minutes, and I can see that we've lost about 10 PSI. So we have a leak somewhere in the system, and let's go see if we can find it. Since we're seeing a drop in pressure, I'm going to inspect for a fuel leak. I'm going to start up here next to the fuel rail, and I'm gonna work my way back, checking all the fuel lines and fittings. 
A leak may be something as small as a wet spot along the line, or it may be something as obvious as dripping fuel. If you still have good pressure and you can't find a leak and you still have a lean condition, you may have a fuel volume problem and we're gonna check that next. Even though we have enough pressure, the engine may still not be getting enough gas. That can be the result of a clogged fuel filter or a bad fuel pump or even a restriction in a fuel line. I've got a hose hooked up to the bleeder valve of this fuel pressure tester and we're gonna test the amount of volume the pump is putting out. To run this test, I'm gonna need some assistance from Chris. So what we wanna do here is we're gonna turn on the fuel pump without starting the vehicle. To do this, we're gonna remove the relay for the fuel pump. Then we're gonna take a piece of wire with a fuse in it, just for the sake of safety, and we're gonna jump the fuel pump directly to the power supply. Depending on the type of relay, it might be terminals 30 and 87. If you look at the bottom of the relay, you'll see markings. But before you do this, make sure you refer to the specifications for your vehicles and the type of relays you have. Another point before we do this is that we're gonna have the fuel pump on, we're gonna have gas in an open container, so we wanna take all precautions. We've got gloves, we have eye protection, and make sure you've got a fire extinguisher nearby just in case. On this vehicle, your power and fuel pump supply terminals are here and here with the relay removed. So I'm gonna take my jumper, I'm gonna insert the ends as soon as Jordan's ready, one in there, one in there, and the fuel pump will turn on. As soon as Chris activates the fuel pump, I'm going to open up the bleeder valve on the fuel pressure tester. We'll count for 15 seconds and we'll see how much fuel we get in our catch can. Go ahead and turn it on. Okay, that's good. Okay, it looks like we got half a liter of fuel in our 15 second window. That means there's no restriction between our fuel pump and our engine. Now that we know that the fuel pump is putting out the right amount of gas and it's making its way to the engine, Jordan's gonna show you how to check out your injectors. If you've got good fuel pressure and you've got good fuel flow, then you might have an issue with one or more of your fuel injectors. I'll inspect the fuel injectors on this vehicle to see if they're broken or if the wiring harnesses are damaged or burnt. If you don't see any obvious signs of damage to the fuel injectors themselves or the wiring harness going to them, you may want to dig a little bit deeper. You can use an automotive stethoscope to listen to the injectors individually. If you don't have access to one of these, you can use a wooden dowel or a long screwdriver as well. I'll demonstrate with the stethoscope. With the engine at idle, touch the end of the stethoscope off of each of the injectors. The injectors should all sound the same. If any of the injectors sound different, have a clunking sound, or make no sound at all, that injector is probably bad. If all of your injectors look good and sound good, you may have an exhaust leak. That's what Chris will talk about next. A leak between the engine and the O2 sensor may be throwing off the data being recorded by the sensor. If air is getting in, it throws off the values, the engine controller thinks that the vehicle is running lean when it actually isn't and it's trying to rich out the mixture for no reason. Have a look around your exhaust, look for cracks, pitting, erosion, maybe the manifold's loose, maybe there's damage to the flex pipe. Just look for anything obviously damaged, maybe start the vehicle up, let it run, listen around, try to see if you can find anything. Maybe you can even feel around the exhaust, you might feel some hot air escaping, just don't get too close, don't touch it. If you don't find anything in the exhaust, at this point, we've ruled out leaks, we've ruled out fuel, we've ruled out air. So the only real thing left to look at is the O2 sensors, and we're gonna talk about that in another video. Hopefully the steps we've shown you today have helped to get your fuel trims under control. Like this video, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. Until next time, fear no fix.